Hi, I'm Tammy with Love Notion Sewing Patterns. Today we're going to talk about the new Ballad Blouse. This pattern is so unique. It's got two different options for your shoulder detail. You can either do gathers or you can do shearing. If you've never sheared before, don't worry. In this video, we're going to walk you through all the steps you need to get a great shear with your machine. We'll also talk about the burrito method and show you how you get a great finish on the inside. Speaking of great finishes, we're also going to cover how to do fringe seams. If you've never sewn fringe seams before, you're going to be amazed at how simple they are. Let's get started. If you've never done shearing before, here is what it looks like. This is one of my earlier samples, but it's a good example of the shearing. Um, it's done with elastic thread in the bobbin and regular sewing thread in the needle. And you just stitch straight across your piece of fabric and then the bobbin, here's the back, that elastic thread makes that gathered or pleated sheared look. You might have seen this referred to as smocking or ruching, um, but shearing is using elastic thread which allows the fabric to stretch like so. I really prefer the Dirtz brand elastic thread and the testers of this pattern have also found this to be um, most consistent quality. So consistency is really important with this because there are so many variables when it comes to shearing. So you can wind your bobbin by hand with the elastic thread or you can use your machine. I vastly prefer winding with my machine and I'll show you how I do that. Winding with your machine gives you a consistent tension on your bobbin elastic, which is important. So I have two fabrics here. One is a tensile twill and one is a polyester, really lightweight, like blouse weight. I have done four rows, they're, they're all the same width fabric, and I've done four rows of shearing on each one. And the only thing I changed was the stitch length. So you can see, on this piece right here on the top, this is the twill and this is the um, polyester. I've used the same stitch length, same amount of, of rows of shearing, and the same width between the rows. Um, you can see the vast difference I get between the two types of fabric. Um, these two up here used a 3.5 stitch length, and then I did the same thing, but this time I used a 5 stitch length on these bottom two examples. And you can see how the longer stitch length gathers it more than the shorter stitch length. And of course, you're gonna, it's going to vary depending on fabric type. So this has, everything is the same about these two, except that they're different fabrics. So the five stitch length on the twill and the five stitch length on the polyester. The polyester, because it's a lighter weight, it gathers up more. Same thing with the 3.5 see how that gathers. So the only machine setting that you really need to play with is stitch length. Now which how long the stitch length is will depend on your fabric type. My recommendation is based on two different types of fabrics that this pattern is perfect for. So either the linen, linen blends, chambray, those heavier type of fabrics, you're going to use a longer stitch length like a five. The lighter weight fabrics like um, rayon, silk, crepe, those kind of lighter weight fabrics, you're going to use a shorter stitch length, like a three or a three and a half. Of course, please test this out on a scrap of fabric that you're going to use, like the same type of fabric that you'll use for your finished garment before committing to all of this, because it will take some playing around. But generally, the rule is the heavier the fabric, the longer the stitch length, the lighter the fabric, the shorter the stitch length. So here are the pattern pieces that you need for to do the sear, shearing on the ballad blouse. Um, you need to cut from your fabric a rectangle, and you can see that on the fold, cut your rectangle on the fold. And you can see I have the shearing suggested markings on here already, but that's a little tedious to transfer to your fabric. I find it a lot easier to just use the width of your presser foot to um, sew these lines. But you're, of course, welcome to press or to mark in those markings. Um, the other pattern piece you'll notice you have is called the shearing detail and this is the little shoulder detail piece. You are not going to cut that out of your fabric just yet 
First, you're going to shear your fabric and then we'll cut this piece from the shearing. And this will, and make sure that every piece is consistent because with shearing, there is so much um, that can be variable. And this is the one way we're gonna control that variance. All right, so I have stuck my, the end of my elastic thread through a little hole in my bobbin and I'm going to engage it. I'm just gonna hold on to the top of this and put just a little bit of tension on the elastic thread as it comes off the spool. So that way it'll be wound with just a little bit of tension and consistent tension on the bobbin itself. So I'm just kind of like guiding it on there. And it gives it a really nice, nicely wound, consistent bobbin. So much faster than doing it by hand. And when you do it by hand, you also run the chance of it being kind of messy and that's not gonna help when you, to get consistent results when you go to sew with that. So um, definitely recommend using your machine to wind your bobbin. That looks nice. I'm just gonna trim that little guy off. And then we just stick it into our bobbin position and make sure you wind it through the tension disc just like you would regularly. So I've got my bobbin wound with the elastic. Um, I've got regular thread loaded in. I have changed my stitch length to a three because it's a very lightweight uh, fabric. So we don't, the it will gather very easily. We're not gonna have to work too hard to do that. So we want a shorter stitch length so it won't gather too much. So I'm just gonna start off a line of stitching and I'm just gonna align the edge of the rectangle with my presser foot, which is approximately a centimeter and we'll start going. So I'm, I'm looking under here, making sure that the uh, elastic thread is going across the top of the bobbin, just like it normally would with any other uh, thread. So if your machine has the ability to uh, cut the thread for you, like this thread cutter, don't use that because that's gonna cut too close to the elastic thread and it will cause problems in future rows. Just use your um, scissors or cutter on your machine and trim that off. So you can see just one row of stitching and it's gathered quite a bit. You can see the wrong side here. The more rows we do, the more it will gather. So we're just gonna continue doing that down the length of the piece. So here is our finished sheared piece. We've hit it with an iron. Um, I didn't go all the way down because I could tell that I had plenty 
of shearing up here, so I saved my elastic. Um, you can see how much it draws up. This is the pattern piece that's supposed to be cut on fold. So your sheared piece should be roughly half the size of what you started with. So now to cut out your pattern piece, you're just going to cut your um, detail shearing pieces from your shearing. Make sure you do a right and a left. So best bet is to fold your piece in half and line up your piece and cut it away. I am going to be cognizant of that last line of stitching and cut it parallel as much as possible to that line. So here is our sheared pieces. So you'll notice that your sheared pieces are quite a bit more narrow than the front body. That's okay, that's intentional. When you're sewing these pieces on, you'll put them right sides together and just stretch your sheared piece to fit the body. That will make the body gather a little bit too. So here are our final sheared pieces. We're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so I just wanna show you a few examples of stitch length and how that matters. So now we're going to go over how to sew the burrito method. We actually have several Love Notions patterns that use this technique, but I'm gonna show you how to do this technique on the ballad pattern. Um, as you can see, this is one sample I've sewn up with the burrito method already done. And you use this method when you have a lining that you wanna get a nice clean finish on. And if you see here on the ballad, see how the yoke here is nice and cleanly finished. There's no um, exposed seam or anything. It looks real nice. So I'm gonna show you how to do that on the sample I have sewn up. So at this point, the back is already sewn with the yoke pieces. And the yokes are sewn in one step to the back piece. And you have one yoke right sides together. And then you have the second yoke, the, the lining yoke, is right side of yoke to wrong side of back. So you have a sandwich there of the back piece and then two yokes between them, or the back pieces between the two yokes. Okay, so once you have done that, take your back and lay it out like this with the right side facing up. And we're going to align our front pieces to the shoulder. So right sides together, like so. So I'm going to take just one side of the yoke and line it up with one with the front bodice piece at the shoulders. And I'm just gonna clip that in place. Like so. So this one doesn't fit exactly. Um, so I'm just going to ease that when I sew, okay? I'm gonna do that on both sides. So you can see this one, I'm just gonna have to ease that one a little bit. It's just, it's not possible to get the shearing exact all the time. It's just, just too many variables. Okay, so now we have attached that to the front yoke. We're gonna open it up. And then we're going to roll up the front pieces and the back. Just kind of bunch them up here in the middle. 
And you can see how I have, you can see the back yoke piece. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap this around this bunched up fabric and pin just like we did before. So now I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I'm going to straight stitch across each shoulder. All right, so you can see I have stitched through all three layers at the shoulder seams and now I'm going to just reach in and turn everything right side out. Real easy. So there we go. We've got our shoulder seams sewn and you can see the right side looks nice and then the wrong side also looks really nice. So I'm just gonna take this to the iron and give it a good press. So most Love Notions patterns include a 3 8 seam allowance, which is pretty typical for indie patterns and especially knit patterns. The ballad is a little bit different because I want you to be able to do those fridge seams and 3 8 is a little small for that. So there's two different seam allowances included. Everything is noted in the pattern, so you need to make sure you read your instructions real carefully. All side seams include a half inch seam allowance, and all other end seams include a 3 8 seam allowance. So it might be counterintuitive, but to sew fringe seams, you're going to start with aligning your pattern pieces wrong sides together, like I've done here. We're going to do it, sew these side seams. These are aligned wrong sides together. So we're going to sew a quarter inch straight seam, straight stitch on each side. And then we're gonna turn it wrong side out, press, and sew another quarter inch. So we get a half inch total. But let's go ahead and sew that quarter inch seam allowance first. Okay, you can see we've got our side seams sewn, wrong sides together. Now we're gonna take this to our ironing board or ironing station and we're going to press that seam open. And be sure you're checking um, your fabric with the iron settings before going to your actual garment. You don't want to like scorch anything or leave funny marks. Okay? So now with this seam allowance, we're going to trim it each side to an eighth of an inch. Some duckbill scissors to protect my fabric a little. Any accidental snipping. So the purpose of trimming these, this seam so when we turn it right side out, or wrong side out, to do the next line of stitching, we want to make sure we are casing all of this. After we've gotten our seam trimmed, now we're going to line things up right sides together as if you normally would. And we're going to give that seam a really nice press and keep the seam line that we have already stitched in the middle. 
as much as possible. take a couple of pins and just secure that side seam area if you need to. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch a quarter inch from away from that seam. All right, we've done that stitching right there. So uh, if you look from the right side, see a nice seam and from the wrong side it's also just as nice. So from the wrong side we're going to give this a press. We're going to press this seam to the back. All right, there you have it. We have our French seam done. We've got our burrito roll done, and I've gone over the shearing with you guys. You should now be able to accomplish all these steps on your own.